Hello viewers, my name is Ozanae Manure and I'm coming to you today with your weekly edition on Agricultural New Directions Agribusiness. This is where we discuss pertinent issues in the production systems here in Zimbabwe. We understand that Zimbabwe is an agro-based economy and as such we are encouraging the youth to participate in agricultural endeavors here in Zimbabwe for all with the prosperity of our nation as we pave way towards achieving Vision 2030 as a country. Now today's episode is anchored on productions, on horticultural productions and a greenhouse uh, conditions. To discuss this first segment, I am joined by Silvanos Dambaza. He is the manager here at Sumergen Investment here in Akshuras. Silvanos, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for hosting us. Yes. Can you give us a brief background of this greenhouse setup? I understand that in your greenhouses you do have sweet melon, you have tomatoes, you are even doing fish in greenhouses. You are also undertaking sweet corn productions, cucumber productions. Can you give us a brief background of your uh, greenhouse uh, endeavors and how they started? Right. So the reason why we use our greenhouses and mainly for the high value crops it's because of the results, the best quality results that we get eventually. Because we discover that using the greenhouses, like in our horticulture our productions, we get the best grades because of the ability to control the temperatures in a greenhouse setup. And also the type of greenhouse that we have, which we also supply. I've got a specialized plastic, which is able to distribute light evenly. Okay. So the plant can get light, sunlight from all the sides. And if you notice that once you walked in, I'm sure you've been in the greenhouse, and once you, once you walked in, you discover that your shadow immediately disappeared. Very true. Yes. yes. It disappeared because the plastic is set up in a way that it disperses light evenly. Okay. Yes. Which is very critical for crop production yes, and crop exactly. growth. Okay. Uh, Silvanos, I want us to talk about the irrigation mechanisms that you use in your greenhouses. You would see that for open field, you can use a horse pipe if you are doing a small uh, section of tomatoes. Yes. You can either use uh, drip irrigation, you can either use for those who are commercial farmers, they can use pivots. But for greenhouses, I understand that there is a specific uh, irrigation uh, mechanism that you use. What is that? And why did you choose that one in particular? Um, first of all, that's a very key uh, point that you've picked because the use of greenhouses comes also on the economic scale okay. because it is economic to use a greenhouse through using the drip irrigation system as compared to using the horse pipe because we use irrigations with, uh, with nozzles so the water goes directly onto the plant okay. which saves a lot of water and it goes straight into the roots, okay. which is a great advantage in terms of like getting the water and distributing it to every plant. Okay. The advantages of drip irrigation and the advantages of having your greenhouses. Earlier on, you did highlight that uh, light is distributed evenly within the greenhouse. Once you enter, your shadow disappears. You cannot see your shadow because light is evenly distributed, meaning that the light intensity per plant is equal and it's important so that the plant develops properly and they all develop at the same time. Now I want you to talk about some of the advantages that come with you having your drip irrigation in greenhouses and the uses of greenhouses at the same time. Like in our case we use pots if you checked like yes. we've got pots we have got pine bark within them. Yes. So using a drip irrigation system like in the greenhouse the advantage also comes on the on the weeding part because it does away with weeds and the nozzles goes directly onto the plant is able to get as much water as it can because it's within a it's within a pot and there's pine back in there and water is supplied directly onto the roots okay yes uh you left out the advantages that come with greenhouse production in general because some of our farmers out there you and i can understand what we are talking about but some of our farmers out there would want to know why should i invest in a greenhouse and yet since time immemorial we used to produce our tomatoes open field but yes. when it comes to your greenhouses your tomatoes or your cucumbers are actually trellised what are the advantages of using your greenhouses and the trellising part okay Two major advantages before I mention about the trellising, I once mentioned about temperature. Yes. That's also a general advantage because you, a farmer is able to farm throughout the, the year. It's not limited to the season, be it in winter, you can even do tomato production. Like in these greenhouses, we've done cherry tomatoes, English cucumbers, uh, baby marrow, courgettes. Yes. And uh, sweet corn right now, you've seen sweet corn and sweet, uh, sweet melon in there. 
Yes. Now, Silva, no, so I want us to talk about the durability of your greenhouses. Because some of them, uh, when we look at it from the uh, outside, you will see that it's plastic. Uh, I, I did see some wood, wooden poles, though they were treated. Let yes. us talk about durability. Because in agriculture, this is uh, something like a long-term investment, whereby you will be getting uh, your returns over the years. It is not something that you can say, after this season, I did return of uh, producing tomatoes. I did return all the investment or the money that I used to build this uh, uh, greenhouse. When it comes to durability, what are your sentiments on that? Yes, I highly recommend farmers to get greenhouses like this because in terms of the structure itself, this, all, like all the steels, they are galvanized, okay. which means they are strong and they last long. And also because they are 40 to 50 millimeters in width and 15 and 14 millimeters diameter. Okay. So the structures are very strong and they are durable. In terms of even moving them, like when you, when you discover that you need to move to a bigger piece of land, you can disassemble, like you can disassemble and assemble and reassemble again okay. on another piece of land. It's very easy to do with this type of greenhouses. Okay. We're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the second segment. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back, viewers. We are in the second segment of your program, Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness. And today we are looking at greenhouse productions, where today at a farm, we are at a farm where they produce cucumbers, sweet corn, and uh, a variety of vegetables in their greenhouses. We are talking of the maintenance of quality and quantity throughout the various stages of production. Now, viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with me, the producer, Wazanae Manure, on 0772-807-506. Six. Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Words and I. We are also now available on Twitter. And our Twitter handle there is at Agribusiness110. Leave your comments and suggestions and make a follow-up on this episode and more on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness with Words and I. At this point in time in this segment, we are going to be talking of cucumber production in the greenhouses. You understand that there is a difference between our production in greenhouses and open field. To discuss this and more, I am joined by Kudakwashe Mugwagwa. He is with Sinjenda. KD, thank you for joining us today. Hi, what's How are you? Yes. Uh, today we're going to be talking about cucumber production in greenhouses. Can you maybe tell us the types and varieties of cucumbers? Thank you very much for that, Wazana. I think I'd like to share with our farmers that uh, regarding to cucumbers, we've got two types of uh, uh, the English cucumber. Then we've got something that we term the American slicer. But I think most farmers, they call it the Ashley type, okay. uh, which is the short version of the English cucumber. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, fertilizer application to ensure that you, get, you maximize on your yields, what types of fertilizers do you use? Uh, that's a very key question. Uh, since I want to say that for you to probably be, be able to have a maximum yield, uh, since when you come to cucumbers, uh, we've got the OPVs. Okay. But at the same time, maybe that uh, due to R&D uh, research, they are now hybrid cucumbers which means that a farmer is able to yield you know, up to 30 uh, fruits per plant. Okay. But all that goes down to the issue of fertilizer, like what you've mentioned. So I think farmers just need to know that whatever happens within the fertilizer regime, there are, there are key things which are required by a plant, which are nitrogen, phosphorus, and uh, potassium. Yes. So those three are the ones which are key. But uh, in our fertilizer regime, uh, we start off with uh, compound C at planting, then uh, we go on to, to AN as a top dressing. But for, for, for shelf life to be extended or for us to have a good fruit with better quality, there is uh, use of uh, fertigation uh, fertilizers, which are more like specialty fertilizers, which include the calcium nitrate, your mag, your mag self, uh, your potassium nitrate, and some even use uh, foliar boost. So these are the types of fertilizers which can help us to get a very good uh, uh, fruit with good quality and a long shelf life. Okay, that was very detailed, KD. Now we have farmers producing their cucumbers in an open field. But in this instance, we are here in a greenhouse. I can see pockets uh, with, uh, this is pine bark. What is the difference between a farmer producing his uh, cucumbers in a greenhouse and the one doing them open field? Okay, I think the, the key... The, the key element there is the issue of uh, 
uh, the seasonality of the crop. Okay. Uh, you find that in winter it's not easy to do the cucumber in the open field. Okay. But if you look, uh, if you go into side a tunnel, uh, some they use the shed net, some they use the plastic uh, greenhouses, which we term that it's a controlled environment. What that implies is the fact that uh, when in winter, when our temperatures are going to drop, yes. here it's a bit warmer, which, which actually allows this plant to grow. So the advantages of using this type of a system is that you are not prone to soil-borne diseases. As you can see, they're using uh, uh, some plastic uh, bags here with, with pine bark, which means this is a neutral media. Okay. Yes, which means they've eliminated the chance of soil-borne diseases. And on, and on top of that, it allows you to maximize your yield in the sense that whilst the plant can be trellised, you're able to actually count your yield before you've harvested the whole, the whole, um, the whole crop. Okay. Because you're actually seeing how many fruits, how many flowers, first of all, you're going to get. And then how many fruits you are able to harvest per each plant. Okay. Like yeah. in this instance, I can actually see a flowers budding whilst at the same time we have fruits developing and this one which is almost re uh, reaching maturity. Now, okay, dear, I want us to talk about pests and diseases which might be a nuisance in cucumber production and how do you control them? That's a good question. I think where, where we want to start off when you want to control pests and diseases is the choice of your variety. Okay. You must make sure that when you're choosing your variety for your cucumber, understand the disease peak which comes with that variety. Uh, for instance, there are some varieties which come with uh, a cucumber mosaic virus resistance. There are some which come with uh, a, a cucumber yellowing vein okay. tolerance. So such diseases can be um, uh, prevented at that stage of choosing a variety. Then to enter into the details of the pest and disease of an active plant, we must focus on the white flies. Okay. White flies, if you check in most uh, greenhouses, they become a, a, a problem. But what is key on the white flies is that our farmers should not ignore the white flies because they are also transmitters or vectors of, of viruses. So when they move from one plant to the next plant, you see that you have started to face problems within your, your plant. The other issue also I have seen in cucumbers, especially in regards to diseases, is the powder mildew. Okay. When there is a humid condition within the greenhouse, it also allows uh, the crop to be susceptible to powder mildew. And there are also other mildews which are, which are also there, like the downy mildew. So I also urge our farmers to look out for such diseases in the cucumber. Okay. Uh, sector of production, yeah. Now, per unit, these plants are trellised. I can see they are in singular form, whereby one plant is trellised. Can you talk about the yield per plant uh, in a greenhouse setup? That's a good question, Wazanai, because when we are having these talks, what is key for a farmer is to understand where the money is. Yes. So, when it comes to yield in the cucumber, I think it also depends mostly on 50% on, on, on effort of the farmer and also 50% choice of the farmer. Okay. What am I saying? I'm saying for a farmer in order for them to get a higher yield, they need to understand the variety. We always go back to the variety. Yes. And then <laughs> they understand what is the potential yield of the variety. And then the other issue goes back to the management of the farmer uh, within, within a, a crop. So what we are looking at is an average of 25 to 30 fruits per per plant okay in this in this in this uh, scenario up. yes okay. yeah okay uh as we round off our segment uh, kd i want us to talk about the water regimen the water application some of our farmers might get into cucumber production uh looking maybe forward to the coming of the rains uh natural rains but at the same time we have those like in this instance those that are producing their cucumbers using irrigation in terms of water regimen what is it like if you look at cabbages you'd find that a cabbage is a, a water loving plant 80 percent of a cabbage is water in terms of cucumbers what is the water regimen like that's a good question because right now we are we are in the rainy season and you know the issues of of water regime is also key for farmers to understand that when you are in the greenhouse, yes. you must make use of your thermometer or some farmers have got a humidity uh, uh, meter whereby they are they, able to check the wetness and dryness of the environment within a greenhouse. So that also allows a, a farmer to really be able to know when 
to irrigate. Okay. Because it's all about timing. And like what you have said, cucumber is also almost 80, if not 90 percent water. So it also means that they require more water. Okay. But uh, there is no really a, a prescribed amount. I can say so many meals per, per two hours. Because also farmers should learn how to measure the water that they irrigate within, within their greenhouse. Okay. What they can do is that they can find a, a measuring cylinder and they open up their uh, uh, irrigation system for like 20 to 30 minutes and understand how many meals are they going to get within that 30 minutes. By doing that now, we can be able to recommend to them as agronomists how much water they should apply. Is it per day? Is it per week? That is where it goes down to. Thank you so much, Kate. It was a pleasure having you with us on this segment. On that note, viewers, we're going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment. We'll be discussing tomato production in greenhouses. In episodes prior to this one, we spoke of tomato production in an open field at a Beatrice farm. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back viewers, we are in the third and final segment of your program and as you can see we are now in a greenhouse setup where they are producing tomatoes. In segments, uh, in episodes prior to this one, we are looking at tomato production in an open field. But today we have come here and we are looking at tomato production uh, in a greenhouse setup. We would like to see how tomatoes are managed and are produced, how they ensure that quality and quantity is maintained throughout the various stages of production. To discuss this and more, I am joined by Wilson Ranjisi. He is the manager of the tomato uh, section, production section, right here in Akshuras. Uh, Mr. Wilson, do you want to Yes. Right. tomato. Tino isanga sana lime ne chipsa. Alright. Eh, no zatu no sanga ni sana ruby. Four sete sambe wedu. Then ta sanga ni saku daro to isamu peke edu. Tino tanga ta dira mvura. Alright. To dira mvura yanya so guta mvura. Then to zutora she sidi edu now. Yeto vista. Alright. To itanga kuchi edu ne zera imu manje. Alright. Kusika ya geminate ya mira. Saka imi mi sidi amuno shandi sa amu amu yendi zwe nyuto ti kune wamu ano tuno tenga kana saka ita kuno ano producer ni sariwa. Yes. Imi muno to tenga ito rika mozi. Tuno to tenga kareka mozi. Saka tuno ita tuno kona kita ne sari edu panap. Eh. Eh. To ita ne sari edu ma seedlings edu ku grow house. Alright. Eh. Embe wiyoi. To zia to jara mui. Mapotum. But for this, yatina yu munomi, takatungu ijigarira muri imu mpote. All right. Mm -hmm. Taa kuenda kuma fertilizer, munuwe isandans, kwa kuti mataura nezu, kuti munuwe isa jipsa, mnele, munuwe isandansa, ne pine bark. Yes. Taa kuenda kuma fertilizer, noti fertilizer, nduwe nori tira chiri mwa, nidoti budise mato ma domasa ne utano, akakura. Fertilizer za munuwe shandisa, zaka mira osei, pa kuprojusa ma domasa. E, fertilizer, taka shandisa sofa, kushika parizu nezu. Tinea tinoti sun raisi. All right. No, right. Yes. Then Alright. Right. Eh, pakuko pa kumba. Harvesting, 
teacher harvest ma mwa chidini ma mwa chiproduce saka zvinoti rati gore duka rinoti kuti torera mwedzi yakati o kuti chingokowa chete tichisa mari mwe ende pasina pressure yakuti ese hakuibva nekuti panoti pa mambo ako mamwe amwa achiri maru amwa achiri tanga kuibva mamwe atoibva saka izvo zvo manje ndo zvinoti nakidza izvi semurini because mari inoramba chingopinda mumwe ipo babu waranchi sititi panyaya yemari kurudziro enyu kuari mimarira nekuterera madomain avakagara nawo ndinonzi kusa kuti mimi munoshanda pamwe chete nemadomain anoya achikudzidzisa anoya achikutaura kuti pakati moita so kurudziro enyu pakuterera madomain uye kurimwa kwemadomas mashoko amangataura kune varikuona chirongwa mari yazvina zvo mashoko enyu amangataura mukupendera chaninga taurawo kune vamwe vanoda kupindo muchirongwa ichi domas rakanaka kuririma Zvikuru sei kuterera vari misi. Jidziso yavano tipa kushanza ma fertilizer nemishongwa kuzoti kana chirwere chada ine ku identify chirwere chacho. Iwe semuri mota tanga uri kureswa mwana kuzoti mwana wangu nasi adziya miri. Apa anenge ari kutemwa nemusoro. Saka domasiri chino chatinokurudzira zvikuru kune vanhu vanoda kupinda muchirongwa ichi. Zvikuru sei takaisa munzimbe yakaita sei inoi. Takaona kuti kuri chandira mu green house ka ari kupi pressure. Arina zvirwere zvakawanda wanda zvinowanika ku open field uko muno umu munenge makadziririka ende yield yacho day and night rurambare chingokura usiku nemasikati renge richingokura uchingosekera kwapinda nasi unona rapa neimwe stage maita basa varanji sitino kuti ndaine kuya pachirongwa nasi ayo hanini ndino tendo mure Zimbabwe there you heard it viewers this was Mr Ranji here telling us of the general management of the tomato crop and we are saying that panotiri pamwe chete kuterera madomain atakagarisana nawo munhu arounda zvinopa pundutso mukurima on that note we are gonna cross over to KD kuda kwashe mugwagwa who be taking us through the pest and management diseases in tomato production uh, KD, we are in the final segment of our program. Welcome back. Thank you, Adzenai. Yes. I understand that pests and diseases will always exist in agriculture, which is why most of our Zimbabwean farmers have a love-hate relationship with agriculture. Some might think that if I produce my tomatoes in a greenhouse, I might never have pests and diseases. But I, under but I understand that there's still some which can be a nuisance when it comes to tomato production, even in greenhouses. It might not be as rampant as in the open field, but still in greenhouses, we can experience and have periods of pests and disease infestation. Can you take us to through the pests and disease which can be a nuisance and those farmers that they need to take cognizance of when producing in greenhouses. Thank you, Watson. I think that is very key uh, for our farmers to understand that uh, not everything is easy, especially uh, in regards to agriculture. So I'll start off with the issue uh, from the planting stage uh, where we have got what we call nematodes. These are also a problem uh, in the uh, section of uh, producing our tomes. So if you start off from the soil, there's the problem of nematodes and even soil pests as well. Then from there, we also face whitefly aphids as well. They can be a problem in the greenhouse. Also, the other uh, uh, issues that we can see is the issue of red spider mite. Okay. Red spider mite can actually make a, a farmer quit farming at all. And also we look at uh, fruit miner, uh, sorry, leaf miner. Leaf miner is also a problem. That's why I like the fact that our farmers, they should learn how to scout, how to even identify these pests. And on top of that, we also have got uh, fruit worms. Uh, we, we have, we, and we also have got tuta, tuta absoluta, which is also a problem uh, in regards to the pests in our crop. Okay, thank you so much, KD. Finally, the profitability story of producing toms. Some might want to produce them not just for money, but for being cool. You are calling them, you are referring to them as toms, which is good, by the way, bringing in terms that, uh, you know, lure farmers into producing tomatoes. It is a very good thing. However, I want us to talk about the in return on investment, the return per dollar invested. If a farmer is going to be producing their tomatoes in a greenhouse, obviously he is incurred more costs than that one who is going to be producing in an open field. These tomatoes are in a greenhouse. They are trellised. They are using the pine bark medium, which is a great investment. It is great capital injections into this project. Let us talk about the return per investment when it comes to production of tomatoes within a greenhouse. That's a very good question, Wazanai. I think from what I want to say on the issue of return on investment is that farmers, they need to understand that for you to produce your tomes in a greenhouse, it's not cheap. That's okay. number one. What does that mean? It means a farmer has got to secure a market. When that has been done, it means when you're going to produce uh, all year round, you are able to know where you are going to take off your yield. But what I can say that uh, for every dollar invested, you are looking at 
between three to five dollar uh, uh, return. Finally, your word of advice to our farming community in terms of listening and taking advice from the technical uh, experts. We are talking of agronomists. We are talking of madumeni. Yeah, I think what I want to say is then is an example whereby our farmers or our yes our farmers also go to doctors and seek advice. Yes. We are the same as agronomists. We are also crop doctors. <laughs> so you must consult us. We'll be there to help you. And, and what is key is that uh, uh, we've got vast knowledge because we visit so many farmers. We have got so much experience with so many crops, especially with horticultural crops and even by variety. Okay. So farmers should not shy away or, or undermine the knowledge that agronomy is safe out there. There you had it viewers, today we managed to look at sweet melon production, tomato production and cucumber production all under greenhouse conditions. We encourage you to be in partnerships with your uh, various uh, technical advisors in your recognized areas, in your designated areas, because it is important, it is imperative to take notes from them so that you become pr uh, productive and you experience the profitability in horticultural endeavors. From me, Wazanae Manyore, I'm also on Instagram, it's a W Manyore, and the crew behind the scenes. Have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching.